So we have already listened to the two talks on the dry eye management. So I think the dry eye is a new pandemic. As the corona pandemic has gone, this has become a new pandemic. Because of the overuse of the computers and online education, I think the rate of increase of dry hand has lost it. So we have other other things like uh, increased use of contact lenses that has not only increased the incidence of the dry eye, but also the MGD has increased with the contact lens use. Other thing I feel ki the water content wise, the energy content wise is associated with the MGD. And one more cause is that uh, the overuse of medication in glaucoma patients, that also increased the incidence of the dry eye. And one more is that uh, the refractive procedures like uh, LASIK or PRK, that has also led to the increased incidence of the dry eye. So what we have listened so far, I don't think they address to the root cause of the dry eye. They are all palliative treatments. They, they have sim symptomatic relief. They don't address to the basic etiology of the dry eye. The dry eye has two etiologies. One is the inflammatory, and other is the bacteriology. So, inflammatory etiology or bacteriological, the infective etiology, is temporarily ad uh, addressed by these medications. That is not reversed. So, the medullary gland dysfunction forms the 80% of the dry eye. And as we know, the prevalence at present at present is around 30 to 50 percent of the population. That's a very high percentage of population is having a dry eye. So if we see that dry eyes and MGD is very common in the population, around 80 percent of the dry, uh, dry eyes are due to the mebumin gland dysfunction or evaporative dry eye. So we have the nebumin glands, they secrete the mebum, and this is, as, as we have all seen in the clinical spectrum, there is a there is neovascularization of the punctum, and there is blockage of the ducts, which leads to the severe inflammation in the nebumin glands, leading to evaporative dry eye. So we have chronic diffuse abnormality in the mebumin gland, characterized by terminal duct obstruction and qualitative or quantitative changes in the gland secretion. So there is also a blocking, there is an atrophy, hyperkeratinization of the duct epithelium, and increased viscosity of the medium. So the classification of the uh, loss of the mebumin gland has it put at different levels. Suppose normally the mebumin gland travels to the uh, from anterior to the posterior. And then we say when all ducts are open and they are working well, we say a zero degree of loss. So depending upon the shortening or obstruction or loss of atrophy of the uh, mebumin glands, we correlate it with the, uh, with the uh, reference map. Then we label as a 25% if there is a mild loss or there is shortening of the glands. And if there is more loss and there is more shortening, we uh, label that it as degree 2, around 25 to 50%. And degree 3 is one that is almost a 60 to 70 percent loss of the mebumin glands. We label it as degree 3, that is 50 to 75 percent. If there is more than 75 percent of loss, you cannot see any mebumin glands. We can see occasional 
fetal functioning medullary glands just less than 10 percent almost. So this is the reading of the uh, medullary glands, which is done on a system. That system is called meter. That's called meter. So this is the system. It has an infrared camera and it has a cylinder and there is a tab attached to it which, uh, uh, which captures the image and we compare it with the reference map. So uh, you can see how it is done. Both the 
both the patient, both the patient, and the uh, person who is doing it should wear the goggles because the protective goggles are very important because the intense pulse light can uh, be absorbed by the pigment in the eye like urea. It can cause anterior eye rites. It can cause pupillary distortion, or it can cause it can be absorbed by the RP. It can cause the retinal damage. So the goggles are very really important to be worn by both, by the examiner as and by the patient. So just one more video. How it is done. Steroids 
three like moment F and we gave methyl prednisolone eight milligram BD for three four days it subsided. Is it red edema or liver cholesterol? Looks like a liver cholesterol. No, it was not previous. Before the IPL, it was not seen. So it is not very progressive. So it happened. Is that simply the cause? That's right, but it was not present before the IPL. Is that the side effect of the side effect of the therapy? So see the side effects I told you. All these iris tonsil germination, posterior sinusitis, photophobia, anti-UIs, and retinal damage. So. They all occur if we don't use the protective organs. So the, the other is if we, the dry is very really mild, we go for this uh, low level thermal energy or the mass therapy. It's an infrared spectrum heat totally. It's painless. It is just a heat. And it has the same mechanism of photobiomodulation. It again acts on the cytochrome oxidase and it uh, increases the cell metabolism and ADP. Questions, please. To all the presenters. Yes. We are doing that Gordian blood uh, picture at the beginning of the therapy. How many sessions are needed? And if we repeat that Gordian gland uh, picture at the end of the therapy, does that change? Basically, it takes long time. It is not that. Uh, after the immediately after the you do IPL mask, it will reverse. It does not reverse immediately. It takes long time. It takes one week, two weeks, four weeks. You are right. It can be maybe it may need to be repeated. But we have seen once we give a combination of IPL and mask therapy, the uh, repeat therapy is needed needed less frequently. Maybe of eight or nine months or even one year. My specific question is. At the start of the therapy, you are taking a picture of the meibomian glands and it shows atrophy of the glands. Based on the percentage of the atrophy, 
you will decide whether the patient will need mask or he will need a combination therapy. This is what I understood. So at the end of the therapy, if we repeat this meibomian gland picture, based on your experience, what happens to these meibomian glands is my question. If we repeat it after uh, like one month, two months, there is significant improvement in the but not immediately. I'll, I'll just try to. Meibomian gland dropout is just one of the parameters for assessing the dry eye disease severity. Tear osmolarity, then the inflammatory uh, cascade that's around the damaged orifices is, I, I, I'll just come to that, is they, they are the working parameters for the treatment modalities. So what, what I infer from your question is you just want to, you just want to know whether there is some regeneration in the number of mebobin glands, but it will not necessarily be so. Because mebobin gland dropout is just one of the parameters, there are not many other you know, uh, pathology is going on that if taken care of will definitely go a long way in elevating the symptoms. Oh, like meibomian gland, uh, you know, orifice plugging, telangiectasias, right? They are something which definitely have a lot of improvement and score with these therapies. You may necessarily not have the regeneration of the meibomian glands, but that's only one of the, uh, you know, working pathologies. There are some other pathologies involved which definitely show. And it's been uh, studied that after the first cycle, you usually need to repeat three or four cycles, or if the patient becomes intolerant, you may have to cease the treatment. And maybe five to seven days after the first cycle, there's improvement in the symptoms. It lasts for a week, but after second cycle, the remission is for a few weeks. And after, as you go on increasing with the cycles, the remission is three to four months. So usually it has been seen that around three sessions of monthly, you know, treatment sessions with this IPL, patient usually are in remission for three to four months, where no uh, medication is required. At the end of the day, you should not sort of exclude suboria, succubus bilifrates and asymptomatic bilifrates. That's very, one of the most important causes of human gland dysfunction. There are a lot of cases of suboria, bilifrates which lead to the memorandum dysfunction. Absolutely. Basically, this IP has been designed and used in dermatology for these very conditions. And after it, they are using ophthalmologies absolutely based on these mechanisms. So that's why telangiectasia, uh, rosacea and all that is something that's really important. Great hygiene is very important. Basically, you have to, when you see a patient, somebody is very, dandruff is very common. You feel, feel, see the dandruff at the root of the eyelashes which causes madrosis, hygiene is very important. You have to clean the lid with an ointment, maybe any ointment, corticosteroid or antibiotics, regular anti dandruff shampoo. You have to change the shampoo. Shampoo has not to be used. Then that is the important cause of this, this gland dysfunction. Most of the persons here, they ignore the scrubus bilifrites. It's very common. And that's one of the common causes of, of the we will want to get that dysfunction. Thank you, sir. There may be, I agree with Dr. Sajjad, that uh, there is <coughs> improvement in the symptoms within one week. But the regeneration of the uh, mebuvian glands, it may take a longer time. Maybe it may not be 100%, but there is significant regeneration after one or two months if you risk cancer. I, I agree, there are many factors. Inflammation is a very important factor in dry. A specific question. No, but the mechanism of IPL it helps in the regeneration of the glands. That is what I said. Yes. Here, your therapy is purely based on meibomian glands. Yes. We are not talking about other factors. Mm. So my request is, once this whole therapy is done, if we take a picture at the end of the therapy in say 20, 30, 40, 50 patients, and then compare the picture before therapy and at the end there of the is therapy. Significant that is what I Yes, there is significant, maybe not 100%, suppose if there is, it was 75%, suppose lost up, it has come down to the 25 to 50, like that. That is the point. Uh, the important thing is that we should not ignore the rheumatoid contractions here. It's a medical ophthalmology. Rheumatoid arthritis, eclosic spreads, osteoarthritis, and radiotherapy, chemotherapy, depression, and it puts some drugs. These are the important causes of a dry eye. 
Sometimes you get a patient who is on steroids, rheumatoid arthritis, ophthalmologists know what are the ocular manifestations of rheumatoid arthritis, like peripheral gorn thinning, sickle rights, epistrophe rights, carotid conjunctivitis, sicca, and sickle rheumatoid perforance. The ophthalmologist has announced you have LASIK, LASIK, but what is important, one has to know the medical ophthalmology, not only diabetes and hypertension, everything. You get a patient who is referred from a, a, on a tubercular. You should know the complication of the drugs. Say if a patient is on chloroquine, he is referred to you. For what? Ophthalmologist should know that there is chloroquine, keratopathy, or chloroquine, retopathy, and bullseye retopathy. So medical ophthalmology should not be known. <laughs> Dr. Dhanwar is very loud, but coming to the gross uh, root level about the megaman gland dysfunction, this is one of the major causes of the triad. In diagnosis, we have tried it with a simple method that in the latest auto meters, you can take a picture and you can see the type. These the ducts are either dilated, tortured, or stenosed. And the simplest therapy which is available in every center and every place is massaging of the lids for fermentation. Don't use many medication, don't use steroids. It really helps, but I congratulate you that in this rural area you are doing such a good job. Really good. Thank you. Sir, uh, I have a request that you we have been also using a lid massage or this or, or warm compress before this technology was not available. But the question is what if there is atrophy of the glands, what the lid massage will do? I don't think it will be effective. And once it's a very that, severe that, that, that's yeah. why that's why uh, those conventional methods or conservative methods are useful in mild <laughs> cases of diabetes. Early cases. Obviously in advanced cases of the gland dysfunction they are hardly going to work. And one more action is about lipid flow. Probably we have not talked about that. Lipid flow is a thermal pulsation system which is actually reserved for mild cases. One, 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 two, any other question here? Any other person has any question? If you fluorescent stage, it will be helpful. That will give you a tear for your time. If anybody wants to ask me about the financial implications. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Yes, that. If anybody wants us, then I can answer. So I would like to know about the uh, cost per session. Cost per session, for example, if a patient comes, what would be the monetary implication for the treatment? Uh, before that, I will address your one question. What you are telling that IPM can be given in a weekly or monthly or for three months or like that session. Because in this way, I am combining the IPM with the mask. The number of sessions decreases. So what's the that that the if you use only IPL, that has to be given monthly. So in your experience of hundreds of patients, what's been the average number of sessions a patient would require? We give normally one session only, then we assess the patient. Normally, after three months, I have given in two patients. I have given a repetition of IPL and mask therapy in two what, patients. What would be the cost involvement for the session? Uh, that I will tell you. Normally, the, in metropolitan cities, they charge around eight to 10,000 for the IPL and the mask therapy. Per session. Per session. What about rural areas? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I will, I, will, I will not tell about the rural areas, I will tell, tell what I am charging for it. So I am charging around 4,000, 2,000 for the IPM and 2,000 for the mask. mask. That is the reduced cost, cost at which we are providing this technology. Thank you for this wonderful presentation and sharing your experience. The total cost is around 13, 14 or 15 lakhs of this machine, total. Yeah. And there is a cartridge also, there is a cartridge system in this. There is a cartridge system in this, you have to refill that cartridge. And the cartridge around, the cartridge cost per patient in IPL is 500 rupees. And in mass therapy is 500 separate. That's all I have to say.